Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where, oh, we've got a lot on the go today. Uh, we're, so first off, we're transferring all the uh, Lenry and his equipment off to Minmus. And then we have a surprise Moho flight coming up because I forgot all about it and then the alarm clock sprung on me. But first, we've got nearly a day until that Minmus transfer comes up. So Lenry's like, I know what I can do. Let's get down to the surface of the moon and do another Keithane uh, run. Now, we just happen to be passing over a three tile wide patch for for Keithane, um, which means that we need to get to the other side of the planet to perform this tiny tiny up the orbiting burn so that we can get round to skimming the surface of the Mun like this uh, so we're deorbiting now as quick as we can um, I obviously on the other side brought my periapsis down and now I'm just watching in map view to make sure that this nice nice blue line stays lined up with all the Keithane once I make sure that's all lined up nicely, I've spotted this plane to land on right here. So we stick the Keithane Hunter into a land configuration, i.e. roll out the uh, the uh, landing gear, the, the feet, the legs, and we start um, burning off all our excess velocity. Uh, you'll tell on my uh, data readout on the top right there that the, the horizontal uh, velocity is dropping immensely. And yeah, basically this all goes really well. I mean, look, look, look at that flat platform there that we're going to land on. Um, just tracking that that retrograde marker. Touchdown happens in three, two, one, and it all goes well. Woo! Celebrations aside, we crack out the Keith A mining equipment and do some basic science. Um, and then after that, it's time for Lenry to get out and show that what a badass on this jetpack he can be. Um, beautiful little transfer from the ladder to the to the flying there, and oh, oh, good good work, Lenry, good work. So with Lenry out, we fly around, we play with rocks, we come and try and get back into our spaceship, fall over and nearly break everything. Take a good long view at the spaceship, fly back up and eventually get back in. Remember that we have science to do, get Lenry back out, fly over, do some science. <laughs> fly back to the ship with the minimal of fuss and after waiting for a few orbital alignments take back off and be all set. Oh, actually we're gonna wait for the uh, electric charge first but there we go boom that was a mission wasn't that good guys um, all that's really left is to do a little bit of docking which incidentally I didn't manage to do very well first time but we'll worry about that when we get there right now look at this beautiful view there is something about just like the flat desolation of like the Munula wastelands that looks really good. And and pull up, Lenry. Pull up. Pull up. Um, there was a small chance of uh, smashing into the, the floor right here. Um, but it's all right. I had a lot of throttle to play with. Um, I, I just slammed it up in gear and set, set about on my way. So now we're going to burn the Apple apps up to meet up with the... Uh, what is, is it a station? It's kind of a station. It's what I'm using as a station but the science depot we're gonna meet up with the science depot and hopefully after playing with the maneuver nodes a hell of a lot we end up with an orbit that brings us actually quite close to where we're trying to be um, so we're just gonna run around our orbit and make sure that everything lines up nicely for next pass around and we're gonna take this rather beautiful looking uh, maneuver burn thing to explain why I'm not showing you the messed up uh, docking uh, basically it just left me 63 kilometers um, around the orbit it wasn't very interesting it, it was easier and more fuel efficient just to reload the quick save and go again so yeah it wasn't very interesting guys sorry and less than four hours mission time later we find ourselves in this position. Hey, we're back, we're back where we started from. We've got more Keithane and we're nearly out of fuel. But more importantly, we've got monoprop and that was the thing that we were like desperately short of when it, when we were there. Um, so, hey, there we go, stuff. At this point, I'll save you the horrors of the 28 hours of time acceleration and skip straight to this point where I'm playing with maneuver nodes to get us from the Mun to Minmus. Now, I've never done this interplanetary trans uh, interbody transfer before. I don't know why, but there we go. This this is the first time for me, and maybe it's the first time for you. If so, let's celebrate together. Woo! 
So, alignments are met and we need to now say goodbye to Gerzer. Which Lenry intends to do in person as he actually has a load of scientific experiments he wants to uh, send with Gerzer. As Lenry is moving further away from the scientific centre that is Kerbal. Um, so we fly on over with Lenry and dump all this science in with Gerzer's... Um, Debris clearing ship, the Grasper 2. And we just quickly fl flutter back. Yes, because we flutter on a jetpack, don't we? And get back in the Keythane Hunter. Preparing ourselves for this uh, first ever burn that we need to make. Now, after some fuel transfers and making sure everything's nice and balanced, we set Gerza adrift in the gold darkness of space. It's alright, remember him though. We will come back and we will deal with him. And I quite like the little spiral that we, 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 we'd kicked into him there. That, that looks nice. Uh, right, so we've got some more time accelerations to do. First thing I do is time is uh, control from the central point of the ship because I've done some test firings and, whoa, this thing gets unstable if you control it from the front. Um, I, I don't know why controlling it from the middle pod works so well. It just does. So we ramp up the time acceleration to ridiculous and wait for Kerbal Alarm Clock ba -bum, to tell us that we're um, approaching the Maneuver Node. And with the Maneuver Node in front of me, oh, the problem with the Kerbal Space, uh, the Kerbal Alarm Clock is that the, 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 the margin is always so long. I know I can go in and change that and I, and I really should, but I... I'm just too, uh, it's not really forgetful, absent-minded, I don't, I don't, I don't do things the moment I think about it and then they're gone. Um, so yeah, with that little bit of self-critique there, we're going to move into this, uh, manoeuvre burn to get us off to Minmus. And I do believe almost immediately I spot that little hunk of rock somewhere on my screen. Okay, I was a little bit mistaken, it took till this point, which has actually been about, I don't know, six, seven minutes of sped up footage, but nothing happened so I decided to skip ahead and there it is Minmus screaming at us out of the distance there um, and oh it's good to see that rock again it is one of my favorite bodies um, you can do so much with it or so much on it I suppose um, but we're gonna skip to the interesting bit again which is of course the uh, orbiting burn deorbiting burn I never know what to call this burn the circularization burn um, which for some reason I decided map view was the best view to watch this in um, whilst it does give us the most information it's not exactly the most visually stunning um, but yeah so we're gonna bring down our periapsis to I don't know maybe a hundred hundred thousand meters something like that um, I, I never know what's the best idea to, to bring bring these things down to. Um, I should have left it relatively relatively big, I suppose. I you know, could have come in and got picked any point, but whatever. We'll we'll go with this one. Forty four thousand meters, forty four kilometers. Not much when you look on that um, zoomed out map, but quite a lot when you say forty four kilometers. So we scream round as fast as we can to the other side of the planet because that's where we need to be to... Ooh. That was a very fast jump there. And also explain where that random key thing patch I had seen come from. Okay, so I'm going to point myself round to retrograde and um, don't ask me what's going on with this uh, manoeuvre node on my um, uh, nav ball right now. Um, I've managed to click and well, left click and right click at the same time and then this just appeared in front of me and I was like oh no I can't set a maneuver and, and then from this point on I couldn't set a maneuver node no matter how much I clicked on screen it was like nope no that's, this, this is me trying right now um, and this might also be me looking at the periapsis but still I couldn't set my maneuver nodes and that made it rather rather awkward um, now hopefully yes as indicated by my mouse right there I'm now looking at my um, on-screen display so we can watch Kerbin hanging in the distance there as we try and get ourselves down into a relatively circular orbit and hopefully soon as I always do leave that keythane scanner on front oh I think I just heard a blip uh, we should be scanning for Keythane at this point, which is the point of coming to Minmus because it's easier to get the fuel off of the tiny rock than it is off of the big one. Um, and I think I'm gonna just kind of skip ahead all like the major like yeah look all that's gonna happen now is that I'm going to time warp and we're gonna look at these trails. Boring. And eventually I get round to this point when I'm like 
Oh, uh, I, I just can't take it anymore. I'm gonna go build another spaceship. Um, let's go rescue Gerza. So I build this, the imaginatively named Retriever Bot. Um, so this is using things from the Kerbal Attachment System. We'll get into that when we get out there. Um, but obviously something went wrong on this first flight. Um, a load of my engines broke. So, um, yeah, billions of, billions of Kerbal Bucks gone. Uh, shocking. Small redesign and we end up with this jaunty little number. Um, we've all seen takeoffs before, so uh, let's start burning this out a bit further. So, booster separation goes well, and it's at this point I'm like, wait a minute, that's not asparagus fuel drain. What's going on here? Um, and of course, because it's a uh, sub-assembling, everything's too close together, all the fuel lines didn't connect up properly. So I've got some uh, rather interesting maneuvers to undertake. We're about a minute down range, and as you can see, thrusting rather hard towards the moon, and boom, right, my outside engines have gone. Now, you'll notice that these are the ones that should have gone last, which means that they'll bang out of order. Mate. And um, so I, I kill my engines, decouple them, and start thrusting away again. Now, the good thing is these four around the outside are just gonna burn down at normal speed, and then I can decouple them uh, right now. Um, which is it's good that they're paired up opposites as well because I can just go through the, the staging and everything remains nicely in balance. Right, so there's our target ahead of us. Let's, um, that's, a, that's a good orbit. As you can tell, thrusting straight from the ground towards the moon. That was, it was a good takeoff. Um, I do manage to just spawn it up sometimes at the right place. And in next to no time at all, I find ourselves in this situation. Boom, moon encounter. And also notice how flat to the to the uh, the ecliptic this is, like perfectly um, uh, equatorial transfers everywhere. Only a robot could do that. That that's why I sent the robot. Incidentally, leads me to a bit of trouble when I'm trying to uh, join up with a, a, an inclined orbit because you know. Those Kerbals weren't robots, but Gerzot wasn't a robot, so that was like massively out of line. Talking of out of line, here's another jump cut. Uh, so we're coming to uh, Moon Periaps. Indeed, we are ooh, 10 minutes away from it. And at some point, Kerbal, Kerbal Alarm Clock's going to be like, hey, you got to do stuff. And I'm like, hey, I haven't got to do stuff for a couple of minutes. Um, and then we start speeding up towards the maneuver node again. Perhaps overshooting, maybe not. Well, not this time because I was thinking about it and we're, uh, well, I was on the ball. So we start thrusting down and neutralizing our velocity, breaking into this particular orbital burn. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know what to call this maneuver. What do we call the maneuver here? Uh, tell me in the comments, guys. I'm obviously out of touch with this uh, particular piece of nomenclature. Right, so we swing round into this beautifully circular orbit and start trying to get our eyes on Gerza because this is in fact where we're going. We are sending him a toolbox to help get his ship back to Kerbal because he's got all the science. So we set up all the standard maneuver nodes to make sure that we are coplanar and at least semi close to his vessel. Um, and to be honest, I kind of messed this one up a little bit as well. We end up with this. You see how I'm going inside and outside of his orbit. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I did there. Um, and I spend a lot of time mucking around trying to set it up. So what we're going to do is jump to this point where we've, um, well, you know, we've nearly got it right. We're, we're at a point where we can start tweaking our velocities to uh, try at least end up roughly in the same place. And there hanging in space is the reason that we do it all to take back science and just stories of adventure to the Kerbal planet and at this point I'm like wait oh 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 I've got things to do damn it um right these are stable let's leave and we load up this jaunty little number now you might be like hey twitchy why are you building so many ships on the slant nowadays and the reason is quite simple um when going straight up i normally end up um slightly wobbling off of perfect upwards um and i'd rather that i wobble towards the direction i want to be going rather than towards any of the other directions so if i just start my ship off in that direction it should be better now i did this one far too much over 
but the, the, the theory is sound. Uh, you know, we can only go in five degree turns and these big ships need to go a little bit less than that else they'll just pull themselves over. And in fact, I did correct this almost immediately with manual control. Also, this is the first outing of my small interplanetary module lifter stage um, it is literally just skippers and big tanks uh, if i had mainsails believe i would be using mainsails but i do i do believe this has enough grunt to get up with enough of its main fuel tank left to get us to any other planet or at least to get these light pl pr probes light probes up to any other planet or down, I suppose, as we're going to Moho. That's in the gravity well, right? Um, I'm, I'm going to count that as down. All in all, I was quite happy with how this takeoff went. I mean, it was a little bit fast in the lower stages. So, like, I think air resistance came into it. But that's fine. And, like, we can, we can deal with that. Um, and as we now start to clear the atmosphere and the stars start to shine through in the background, we, we drop down through a... What is that, our third stage? Our solid boosters are our first, and then there's the two um, two liquid stages. And we begin, um, oh, cinematic viewing. No, we're going to begin turning over shortly, hopefully. Or we're going to look up towards Moho and see where our target is. Um, the main reason being is I spotted the moon there, and I was like, hmm, I wonder what else we can spot from this distance. But of course, when looking for Moho, we're just going to be looking into the sun and that doesn't help you find anything ever but that's okay because we have like all sorts of fancy tracking systems and stuff nowadays um and very very quickly we find ourselves up in this position um we are circularizing our burns our apoapsis is 110 and we are thrusting for all we're worth trying to get our periaps up to nearly the same uh and indeed because you know I've done this uh, quite possibly hundreds of times now it goes swimmingly which begins the horrors of the maneuver nodes um, I, I, I must have spent literally 45 minutes just going through maneuver nodes trying to find this little gem that I knew was there somewhere it had to be there somewhere so uh, yeah there we go, found it. Now all that remains is to uh, line up and do my thing. And for once, the default setting on Kerbal Alarm Clock actually is the right amount of buffer for what I need. Um, well, at least it was enough to make me feel comfortable so that I could uh, reposition this vessel because for some reason I didn't put any large scale uh, torque control on. The, uh, the only control I've got is from the probe on front. Um, but yeah, that said, off we go. And with that said, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this spacey adventure, guys. Um, we will get to how this finishes next time because, well, if I was going to do it all here, it would run over like massively amounts and, and we're already at quite a good episode. So if you like the video, please like the video. And if you really want to tell me something, drop me a line in the comments. Thank you very much and bye bye.